Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about the future of a desktop tower PC. Personally, whenever I think about a computer, I still first imagine a large case fitted with a motherboard and drives and other components. But I'm also aware that due to changes in technology and the rise of mobile devices that the tower PC may soon be an endangered species. Tower PCs have been around for a very long time. Indeed, if you owned a personal computer over 30 years ago, the chances are it was about the same size, roughly the same form factor as this modern tower. Admittedly, 30 years ago, your computer might have been placed horizontally rather than vertically on the desk, and almost certainly it was beige rather than black. But the basic size was roughly the same as this modern tower PC. And yet today, as we all know, people are far more likely to own a smartphone or a laptop than a tower PC. And to give ourselves a feel of this, if we look across to the data for how people view this YouTube channel, we discover that only 50% of views are now on desktop and laptop computers combined, with the other 50% attributed to a phone, TV or tablet. More broadly, if we examine this data from Canalys, we see that over the past 10 years, laptops have constituted an ever-increasing proportion of traditional computers sold. And of course, in the past few years, not all of the desktops in this chart would have been tower PCs. Having established that desktop no longer dominates, let's turn to the specific fate of the tower PC. What we have here is pretty typical. This is based on a standard called ATX, Advanced Technology Extended, that was introduced in 1995. And ATX itself was a development of an earlier standard called AT, introduced by IBM in 1984. So the default, the de facto standard for PC form factors hasn't really changed for the best part of 40 years. Although of course, what's inside the case has changed a great deal. If we look back to an early AT motherboard, I've got one here. One of the things that strikes you straight away about an early board like this, this has got a 386 processor. One of the things that strikes you is the lack of onboard connectivity. We've only got one connector on this motherboard. It is here, it is a keyboard connector. And therefore, if we look inside an AT PC case, we discover a lot of expansion cards to provide all of the connectivity. And we also discover a power supply at the back and at the front, a stack of drives, including one drive for reading and writing a floppy disk. Now, since the transition from the AT to the ATX standard, all motherboards have had an input output and I.O. panel. So if we swizz around this tower, we find its I.O. panel on the back. There it is, provides lots of connectivity, USB ports, audio jacks, an Ethernet port for connecting to a network. Pretty much all of the connectivity on many tower PCs is on the I.O. panel, which is part of the motherboard. And because it's part of the motherboard, it means you don't have to have a lot of expansion cards inside the case. And indeed, many tower PCs today will have no expansion cards inside them at all. And the ones that do have expansion cards probably have just one card, which is a graphics card for if the PC is used for gaming, high-end video editing, things like that. The other big change that's taken place across the past five or 10 years has been a reduction in the number and the size of the drives inside the average tower. Clearly, the floppy drive has now gone the way of the dodo, the floppy drive is now extinct, and even optical drives aren't as common as they used to be, although this PC still has a DVD drive. And even hard drives are becoming less common inside tower PCs because of the rise of a SSD storage. And today it's now not that uncommon to find a tower PC that doesn't have a floppy drive or an optical drive or a hard drive because it only uses SSDs for its storage. And that storage might be on two and a half inch SSDs like this, but it might all be on M.2 drives, 
tiny little SSDs like this, which plug directly into a computer's motherboard. Now, one of the big consequences of the fact we've got fewer and smaller drives in our tower PCs and fewer or no expansion cards is that there's a lot of wasted space inside the case. Indeed, in the average tower today, there's probably more empty space than there is space occupied by useful components. And it's therefore not a surprise we've seen the rise of the small form factor, the mini form factor desktop PC marketplace, with devices like this able to offer all the computing power that many users require. To get a taste of where things are likely headed, we just need to look to Apple. So if we go across to the Apple website, here we are, we can see that the product range starts to be listed with the laptop computers, but it then boosts across to the desktops, the first of which is the iMac 24. And as we can see as this loads in, this is a desktop PC integrated into a very thin monitor. Moving across, we then get the Mac Mini, another very small computer, as we can see in the picture here, although we can scroll down for an even better picture. There we are. We can see the size of the Mac Mini relative to the keyboard. And then after the Mac Mini, the third desktop range is the Mac Studio. Recently launched the Empower Station, as it says there. That gives us a one picture of it, if I can scroll properly. Let's scroll down though for a better image to give us a better idea of the size. There we go. We can see it relative to the size of the monitor here. And the Mac Mini and the Mac Studio both have a footprint which is less than 20 centimeters or 8 inches square. All of the desktop Macs we've looked at so far also use one of Apple's M1 ARM processors, which have the CPU, GPU, and RAM integrated on a single component. This allows Apple to deliver small, powerful desktop computers that are also highly energy efficient. Indeed, it's not until we go across to the Mac Pro, the last of the list here, there it is, that we find a tower form factor computer. There we are, there's the Mac Pro, and if we go down there, there we are, clearly this is a tower Mac. And the Mac Pro is currently still based on an Intel Xeon processor and has a starting price of $6,000. So, for the majority of Mac users, the tower desktop form factor is already extinct. Back in the realm of IBM compatible computers, Intel has for some years sold very small desktops called NUCs or NUCs. NUC stands for Next Unit of Computing, and as we can see if we scroll down on this page, you can purchase a NUC either fully assembled or as a kit which can be customized with some of your own components. Most NUCs are 117 by 112 by 54 millimeters in size, or 4.6 by 4.4 by 2.1 inches. A wide range of processors are available, with some NUCs in this very small form factor having an i7 CPU and up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Until very recently, all NUCs had soldered processors that could not be changed. However, in February 2022, Intel announced the NUC 12 Extreme with a socketed CPU. This supports an i7 or an i9, with the case being 357 by 120 by 189 millimeters, or about 14 by 4.7 by 7.4 inches. As a result, a NUC Extreme can be fitted with a conventional graphics card. And it's therefore not hard to imagine desktops of this size becoming popular with gamers, as well as those who use PCs for video editing or 3D graphics. Just because Apple and Intel now sell small form factor desktops, it doesn't necessarily signal the demise of the tower PC. This said, there are now lots of different small form factor desktops on the market from many different manufacturers. Some of these are mini PCs like this Odyssey X86 J4105, whilst others use a micro ATX motherboard to produce a miniature tower like this Acer Aspire XC that is similar in volume to a NUC Extreme. Yet other small desktops use a mini ITX motherboard, which allows a desktop PC to be built that is roughly the same size as a shoebox, 
and sometimes far smaller as we've seen with the Mini ITX build that I've done on this channel. To me at least, what all of this suggests is that ATX form factor tower PCs like this one are now, sadly, an endangered species. Certainly it's getting fairly rare to see boxes of this size being rolled out in organisations. In companies, in university departments, you don't tend to see cases of this size being rolled out unless there's a particular specialist application. And as Apple has shown us so well with the development of its M1 chips and soon its M2 chips, it's now possible to integrate a great deal of processing power and memory and graphical processing power onto a single package. And my guess is that sometime in the next five to 10 years, we're going to see a CPU, GPU, NPU, RAM, and storage all in a single package. And as that type of development really takes hold, I think it's going to be very difficult to keep justifying the sale of what are in effect largely empty boxes. So to summarize all of this, I would first make three key points. Firstly, a smaller and smaller proportion of computers will be desktops. And a smaller and smaller proportion of desktops will have an ATX or similar tower form factor. And thirdly, even in gaming and video editing, small form factor alternatives will by 2030 turn traditional tower PCs into a niche product. Sadly, what these three points almost certainly imply is that it's going to get harder and harder to maintain and build your own computer. For the best part of 40 years, people like myself and many of you who've wanted to build your own machine have been very lucky that IBM created an open standard all the way back in 1984 and that that standard has pretty much endured. So we could go and buy our own components, buy our own box, put them together, build a PC like this. But that's going to become harder and harder to do as a smaller and smaller proportion of hardware is in the same sort of form factor that allows that to happen. Granted, things like Intel's NUCs can be self-built to a certain extent, you can configure them, but it's not going to be quite the same as building a tower PC. This said, I don't think that a form factor like this will disappear without a fight. I would suspect that in 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 years time, we will still see around some tower PCs. Although I suspect by then they will have become retro hardware. I suspect there's going to be a massive marketplace for decades to come in secondhand components and in retro style cases and parts so that people who want to keep building tower PCs will be able to do so. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.